I'm Eric Vernon. And I'm Kevin Baldwin. And together we are Baldwin and Vernon. Eric, what would you say drives a lot of the people to actually contact us with regard to employment issues? You know, I think I think it's a bunch of different uh, factors that drive people. We talked in another episode about how lots of times people have been fired and then they've applied for the unemployment benefits and then they've been denied by their employers. In fact, um, sometimes it's it's sad that employers deny their employees unemployment because had they not done that, they the employee never would have come to us. That is true. We've gotten some <laughs> of our best cases that way. That's right. That's right. Um, you know, we get a lot of we get a lot of referrals. Lots of times, people have been have been fired or being treated really bad at work, and they call other attorneys. And you know, this is a fairly esoteric or specialized area of law. Yeah, they like a lot of areas of law. If you don't do it, you shouldn't. You shouldn't piddle about in it. That I would absolutely agree with. That there have been many times where some some other lawyer has initiated a case and didn't even recognize. It. We have one case right now that's an excellent case. In fact, it's one of the strongest cases we have, and it's against a casino for sexual harassment. And so you have a well-moneyed defendant that nobody really likes with a fantastic area of law that's really uh, under the public eye right now of, of sexual harassment, and another lawyer who doesn't really do employment law took the case. And they allowed it to go through the EUC process, which is fantastic. You know, everything was done timely. But at the end of it, they didn't understand the case that was before them, and they told the gal they didn't, she didn't think she had a case. And, of course, what happened when she called us, Eric? Well, first of all, thank goodness she called us in time. Yes. Because that's one thing. A lot of lawyers, a lot of, a lot of our colleagues that we talk to um, and we see at bar functions and stuff, a lot of them understand this about employment law, and that is there's a very short and, and hard to understand statute of limitations. In fact, it's the shortest statute of limitations under the law because by the time you get that right to sue, you only have 90 days to bring your lawsuit or your rights, your causes of action are gone forever. Right, and so that's one of the reasons why a lot of other lawyers refer people to us. And so that's, and so that's one of the first questions we ask is, when, when was the last bad thing that happened to you? When was the last, were you fired or, or did somebody demote you or not give you promotion, when did that happen? Because, Kevin, how many days? We only have 180 days under the Missouri Human Rights Act to bring that cause of action. Under the federal statutes, you have 300 days from the last act. Now, you and I have sat in a room before with somebody who had an egregious, egregious act taken against them. And we're listening to it, and we're like, wow, wow, really? Can you prove that? I've got pictures. I've got video. I've got the text messages. Oh, that's that's horrible. We would absolutely be willing to represent you. When did this happen? What happened last year? I'm only coming to you now because I can't find a job and they're blackballing me. And our then our first thing is, what do you mean it happened last year? A year ago? Yeah. Then we have to give them the bad news. I'm sorry, but this fantastic, valuable case that you had no longer exists. Right. And then every now and then like this case you were talking about this story you were telling a minute ago every now and then people come to us after they've already filed their own charge of discrimination and now they've got their right to sue how many days they got with the right to sue they only have 90 days to file the lawsuit and here's the thing about that that's both federal and state so if you get your right to sue from the state or you get it from the feds you only have 90 days uh, from the date it was issued to file that lawsuit. And that's a no kidding hard stop, right? Yeah, there's no tolling of that statute, anything. It doesn't matter if you were out of the country, if your kid was sick, if you just didn't have time to get to a lawyer. You know, the very first thing you should tell a lawyer, too, is if you got a right to sue, is when you talk to them on the phone or talk to their assistant and are making that appointment, I've got a right to sue, and it was issued on this day. That's very important information. So let's say the the person calling us has not filed a has not filed a charge yet they just know or they suspect that something's going on at work that happens a lot in those situations especially we'll get um uh, a lot of employees now one thing i want to talk about is people always think that oh you do civil rights employment discrimination oh that's only for black folks that's only for you know for for uh hispanics that's only for latinos no in fact, the majority of our clients, and I think you'd agree with me, Eric, the majority of our clients are men and women, Caucasian, over the age of 50. And a lot of that reason is because age discrimination is prevalent. 
age discrimination. Pernicious, almost, I would even say. I think it trumps almost everything at this point. That and disability. Disability. If, the if, cancer. The oh, cancer blows your mind. The but, cancer, oh but goodness. heart attacks. Yeah. Uh, renal failure. If you've got kidney disease, suddenly your Seizures. employers. Oh, yes. And suddenly, you might have worked there 15, 20 years and been a great employee, but now they see you as a broken down cog in the machine. And what happens to the broken cog in the machine? It gets replaced. And that's how they look at you. And people are like, oh, my employer would never do that. They're loyal to me. No, no, they're not loyal to you. You might have been loyal to them, but that loyalty oftentimes is not a two-way street. So, you know, one thing we do get asked a lot is, is by people who are in this situation is can I record the conversations that I'm having with my boss? Yep, and I covered this in a in a brief episode another time, and that, and that and that answer is yes. Both Kansas and Missouri are one party states, which means you can record a conversation as long as you know it's being recorded, and as long as you're part of that conversation, you can record it. In fact, I strongly urge people to do that. Now, the one time you cannot record is if you put that recorder down and you leave the room. And the other two people who are talking don't know it's being recorded. But if you're part of a telephone conversation or in-person meeting and you want to record that, the law says you can in both Kansas and Missouri. All right. Now, wouldn't you also say that, that one of the real important things for people to do, even before they call us, is to start a journal? Absolutely. You need to write about what's happening and who's doing it and how it's different. For instance, uh, for our one employee who was there 22 years, he got a new boss, a much younger boss. Our client is 57 years old. His boss is 30. And the 30-year-old boss suddenly sees fault in everything our client does. And our client figures it out. He starts to be treated differently. All of a sudden, he's not getting the same uh, respect. He's not getting the same assignments. And he's being degraded for things he's done for the last 20 years. And by the way, he's never had a bad evaluation in 22 years. And all of a sudden, he's the worst employee that works in that division. The only thing that's changed in that situation is the fact that he's gotten older and his boss has gotten younger. Yep. Um, well, one thing I definitely, I, not to interrupt you, but the one thing I would definitely say is when that starts happening is start recording it, writing down what's happening, and then contact the lawyer. Because even if you haven't filed a charge of discrimination, we will do that for you. In fact, oftentimes it's better if we do. But sometimes, more importantly, we can begin the process before your employer realizes you even have a lawyer. One thing I tell people is don't go to, don't go to the work and go, I'm going to hire a lawyer. I'm going to get a lawyer. No, don't fire that warning shot. <laughs> Come get us first and let's, let's plan how we're going to represent you, plan how you're going to complain, and plan how we can put you in the best position possible to be treated fairly and to protect yourself. Well, and plan on how to collect evidence, Absolutely. right? Because lots of companies have lots of very strict policies and guidelines about what can and cannot be transmitted outside of the office. And we don't want our clients to be given the employer a reason to fire them. That is true. In fact, we want to make sure that we're in compliance uh, with the, number one, with the law, but number two is we don't want them to engage in what what the employer could qualify as misconduct. We right. do not want to do that. But what we want to do is formulate a plan so that we can gather the necessary evidence to help protect them, so they can make their claim, protect themselves, and push forward. And identify the necessary evidence. So say there's a document that 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 shows it's very very strong evidence. But the company says this is our comp this is our property and you best not be taking it. If we at least identify that that document exists, absolutely, and then in the discovery process it's not provided, you know that in and of itself can be even stronger evidence. Yeah, and we've had that before where we know that a document existed, uh, and there's plenty of evidence regarding the document. In fact, people talk about the document in email exchanges, and then when we ask for it, suddenly we don't know what happened to it. You know, and one of the things that we do very first thing when we start representing someone and we let our representation be known to the employer is we send an electronic preservation letter. Preserve all these documents, all these things. Now, if they destroy those documents, conveniently destroy them, well, then oftentimes the court will allow us to make the argument that they did this intentionally. And that looks negative. A jury does not like that. They, the jury wants the evidence to be presented to them. And if you hid the evidence from the jury, they're going to think, well, the only reason you hide something is because you did do something wrong. And I want to go back to the, the idea of the journal just for a moment because 
timing is is really important in these cases. These cases, these discrimination cases, are almost always built on circumstantial evidence. Today, no employer says, I'm going to fire you because you're black or because you've got cancer. They always have some alternate reason, and, and it's there's almost never direct evidence. It's almost always circumstantial. Well, one of the strongest pieces of circumstantial evidence is timing. You know, if, if well, like the Kelly case we yes. talked about in the, in the other episode, if he, he, he tells them that he's got cancer and within 43 minutes they initiate the document that they're going to use to fire him. That timing is key, and it was important. And in that case, we had the email that he sent. Yes. But had he just done the phone call, it would have been very helpful had he written down and that was before he had hired us, but I mean, he could have come back, gone back and recreated a journal. But timing, Certainly. timing can be very, very important in these cases because they're circumstantial evidence. And your records, in addition, do not get rid of your text messages. Do not delete your emails. And when you get your phone records, it demonstrate you did make a call, maybe to the boss's cell phone or something like that. It's very important. And one thing I do want to tell people is. If you and your boss have had a discussion where you think the boss has said something inappropriate or said something that leads you to believe that I think he's discriminating, what you need to do to record that call after the fact is send an email. You know, John, uh, we talked on the phone today and I was concerned about the fact that you said I could no longer do this, but you're letting Terry do it. And Terry is 10 years younger than me and just came to the company. And I don't understand why you're having a less experienced, less seasoned, less senior employee do this job when I've been doing it successfully for years. That's the type of thing that we can then later use as a good piece of exemplary evidence. Now, you mentioned um, not deleting emails and and texts and that kind of thing it's also important to limit what you do on social media oh my god social media it has been both a boon and a boondoggle for us we've had fantastic things that have come in from our our bosses the bosses that are out there discriminating uh, if they come and say, no, I don't have any problem with Mexicans. I never said anything bad against Mexicans. Really? Well, let's look at your Facebook page and we can demonstrate that. <laughs> By the same token, we've also had clients who've gone on Facebook and trashed their employers. Or, 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 uh, or said things like, I'm going to make a million now yes. because I'm going to sue this employer for everything he's worth. Oh, and then it's... And then, it's just crazy. It's crazy because they, they're blowing off steam and it might feel good to them, but in reality what they're doing is establishing a record that hurts their case. Right. So you would advise anybody, even before you call us, talk to us about your issues. Don't talk to all your Facebook friends. Exactly. And by the way, all those people who you work with who are Facebook friends, they are not really your friends because they need to keep their jobs. And if it means turning on you and turning you in, well, Eric, we've seen them do that. All right, this has been uh, Kevin Baldwin and Eric Vernon from Baldwin and Vernon, and we are employment discrimination lawyers, and we can help you if you're in trouble. I strongly suggest you give us a call. Our number is 816-842-1102. You can also find us on the web at www.baldwinandvernon.com, or just Google us. Google Eric Vernon, Kevin Baldwin, and employment lawyer, and you'll find us. In addition, uh, we also have an individual who speaks fluent Spanish, and she can assist those of you who have Spanish as your first language.